yesterday, you know who signed uh, uh, a relief package that includes paid sick leave for hourly workers and free quant uh, coronavirus testing. He's also invoking the Defense Production Act, which gives him power to direct civilian businesses to meet orders necessary for national defense. Here's how he's framed it, his coronavirus response yesterday. Take a look. The big thing we did was a very early uh, stoppage of people coming in who could be very, very heavily infected. Uh, that was a that was a very good move, and it was very early, very, very early, when most people, including a lot of professionals, they didn't want us to do it. Uh, that really saved a lot of lives. And yeah, I look at it, I, I view it as a, uh, in a sense, a wartime president. I mean, that's what we're fighting. I mean, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a very tough situation. You're. I mean, is he, he's right to call this a war, is he not? I agree. I think calling it, I want him, I want this to be taken with the severity and the and concern it deserves. And honestly, the generation, we're seeing a lot of young people that aren't taking this seriously, yeah. but I tend to think the generation at risk, not necessarily in cities, but spread out across the country, maybe aren't taking this as seriously either. And yet the word war, they understand. So if we need to call it war also to with the solution, I've taught I've I really agreed with Biden's suggestion of getting the military involved to, with, with their expertise, with their resources. So if I'm consistently saying we need that type of response, I don't care what he calls it, it just needs to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I, I don't do know. Do you think I, it's possible that we have to have his people do the same thing? Because, you know, Rand Paul and several other uh, folks we're holding this up like it wasn't really a big deal. Doesn't, don't we have to get everybody on board with the fact that this is, n this is not a joke? Young people, senators, Congress people who are still sort of hedging their bets. Don't, doesn't he also need to get them in, into shape? Well, I do feel like recently, you know, you have the Senate passing um, this bill, this re relief bill, the stimulus bill. I, I think people are at, at a point now where they're realizing the severity of the situation. But I am very uncomfortable mm -hmm. with this president saying that he is a wartime president. Because in my view, last yeah, week, he said he wouldn't take any responsibility for the significant delay in the country's coronavirus testing capabilities. And you have a president who is notorious for being uh, a, a draft dodger. Uh, when it came to Vietnam and, you know, getting these bone spur uh, deferments. And, and so to sort of try to reframe his legacy when it comes to the coronavirus response as a wartime president, um, I, I'm very uncomfortable with because wartime presidents take responsibility for their failures, and he has been unwilling to do that. I mean, if you look at any video of his responses from January up until even now, um, I, I think there's been mm -hmm. a lack of leadership. But and legacies and I, I are don't, determined I don't think over you time. That. I don't think he can write his own legacy right now. So I don't think the language is determining legacies. We always well, say when someone's being judged by their performance, wait, I give it a decade is, or so. I think yeah. language matters. I think it's very important. I think his language matters. I think he tries to... Um, you know, use language, and he uses language very effectively, and I refuse to allow him But we haven't to call had him. The problem we've president. all criticized is that the administration didn't act fast enough or yeah. strong enough. Now we have him using strong language, and I will There's get behind list. any language if people start listening, because I am not waiting for politicians to tell me. I'm waiting for doctors and scientists, and right now, whatever the politicians do is secondary, but if it means that he is saying stronger things and people are more scared and more cautious about what the they're doing out and about, then I can get on board. I think right now a, people need to take this very seriously. I think he's the seriously. liar in chief, and I will refuse to give him the moniker of a wartime president. He doesn't deserve that. I don't think it's about what he deserves or not. I think it's the realities of the world we're living in. And right now, there's almost 10,000 cases, 150 deaths, 222,000 cases worldwide. I mean, the U.S. Navy is sending a floating hospital here to New York for the cases that are coming. And I think if you go by war, by deaths that are happening, we, we're going to surpass 9-11. So I think I agree with Sarah in the sense that I don't really care at this point what it takes to get people um, alert. You're seeing videos coming out of Florida of spring breakers partying and clearly not listening to the news or their parents parents. Um, just, I think I, I just read that DeSantis is just now going to quarantine Florida, but people have not been paying attention to this. I mean, there are people that work at this show that aren't paying attention to this, that are still comfortable going out, doing things, and I think we are at a time of complete crisis, and I wish people had been taking this seriously okay. a lot sooner.